Good morning, Illini, and welcome back to another Healthy Illini podcast. As always, I'm your host, Matt Schrock, and it's homecoming week here at UIUC. With homecoming comes uh, just a different feel and energy, a buzz around campus. It kind of feels like fall is officially here now. And so because of that, we want to uh, also honor that and be a part of that energy. And so this is a special homecoming podcast here, and we hope you enjoy it. I'm joined today by two University of Illinois alumni who are now staff, Bree Witted and Todd Johnson. So uh, we'll do introductions first, just get those out of the way. Bree, we'll start with you. Uh, if you would just tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, when were you a student here at UIUC? What did you study? And kind of, uh, and what do you do on campus now? Thanks for having us, Matt. Um, happy homecoming week, everyone. Uh, I was a student here at the university from 2002 to 2006, and I studied in the food science and human nutrition with an option in dietetics area. Um, and now I work as a dietitian within the health education unit um, within McKinley Health Center. Well, we're glad you're here joining us today to share a little bit about your perspective on homecoming and your time. Uh, we're also joined by Todd Johnson. Uh, Todd, you're up. When were you a student on campus and what do you do now? Matt, I came here in 1984, um, graduated in 1988 with a degree in broadcast journalism, um, which doesn't really sound like a useful tool for a nurse <laughs> practitioner, but um, you'd be amazed how much the communication skills apply. Um, one of those people that just kind of came to Champaign for school and stuck around. So it's been almost 40 years. <laughs> This is kind of a, a different kind of podcast for us because we've been doing a lot of informational type things on health and wellness topics. And so we don't really have a particular topic we're going to talk about today. I just wanted to kind of get your guys uh, thoughts on the campus and and homecoming and various things like that. So this is a little bit more of just a laid back conversation on those types of things. But first, we'll start off. Think back if you can. Uh, why did you choose UIUC? What led you here? Was it an active choice? Was it just kind of like, I just kind of fell into it? Uh, how did you end up on the campus as a student? I'll go ahead and start there. Um, I, I had a sister that was in school down here at the time. Um, I'd always been interested in coming to the U of I. I'd always been a, a fan of the school, a fan of the sports teams and stuff. Um, and then when my sister was down here in school, I came down and visited a few times. So I had applied to different places, but this was really the place that I wanted to go, right? Um, you know, walked into the U of I with the, you know, designs on, I wanted to be a lawyer. And then I got involved with, uh, um, a line of media company and I was like, I want to be a news guy. And so, um, churned through so many things here, but, uh, U of I is always the place that I felt that I wanted to be. And so, so not surprisingly, I ended up here. <laughs> How about you, Bree? Um, you know, I started maybe like freshman year of high school thinking I could go, far, far away. And then the reality of it set in when I started applying to colleges and um, always kind of had aspirations to go here, um, but then realized that it was close to home, but not too close to home. And so that's kind of one thing that really appealed to me. I was from a small town, um, maybe 30 minutes from Champaign. And so it kind of had that like hometown feel for me. Um, but it still felt like I was going away. So now that you you are back uh, as students, you left, and I don't know if your designs were ever to work on campus or to stick around campus or anything like that. But now that you're back, you have a pretty special perspective uh, as a staff member. What is it like to now kind of shift your thinking and work as a, work as a staff at your alma mater? Um, what how how did being here as a student kind of help you prepare prepare you for this? Well, when I was a student here, um, you know, I didn't make much use of McKinley. Um, I was under the impression that since I was on my mom and dad's insurance, I couldn't use McKinley. Somebody had told me that at some point, and uh, it's totally wrong. And <laughs> so I go kind of go out of my way to let students know, and I'm at orientations and things, that, uh, you know, whether you're on student insurance or your parents' insurance or no insurance, I mean, it doesn't matter. Insurance has nothing to do with McKinley. It's all covered by your health service fee, and you just you come as often as you need to. It's a it's a great option, you know. Um, and so for me, um, the opportunity to come back to McKinley um, or come back to the U of I, it was huge. I mean, I love the university. I'm a season ticket holder for basketball and football. Um, I've you know I worked at Channel Three here in Champaign, so I've always been kind of up with what's going on with the university. And when the option um, the opportunity came for me to come back 
um, and work here, I was like, yeah, I definitely want to come back. I just wish I would have done it seven years sooner. So my tuitions for my kids would have been half price. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, go uh, as we're preparing for this, Bree. You kind of talked a little bit. I want, I want you to share. Um, you really were stressing some of the things that being at UIC uh, helped prepare you as far as the the um, being able to be equipped, understanding how to learn and how to communicate and those types of things. So, if you would share a little bit about that, how that how being a student has helped you now in being staff here on the, on campus. Yeah, sure. I think the the university obviously afforded me. Um, not only a very well-rounded education um, within the nutrition arena, but it like just as importantly allowed me um, to kind of gain a, di a diverse set of experiences to help me prepare for a successful career. Um, some of these experiences included like leadership opportunities through many of the student-led organizations I was involved in. Um, in these organizations, I found myself able to kind of collaborate, navigate, and support um, a diverse group of student participants, um, much different from a lot of the students that I had been surrounded with coming from a small, um, a small town. So I learned quickly at the university that in a competitive environment, um, as far as academics and finding yourself being able to get involved in activities, it was super important to find a way to like set goals for myself, prioritize, um, and then like hold myself accountable. Um, and I think that these are all qualities that have kind of carried over or overflowed into um, various jobs I've had and into my workplace now. So, you know, we, we, we can talk a lot about, you know, the, the things that prepared you, uh, but I kind of want to go a little bit to a, uh, a little bit more unique perspective type things. Um, first off, uh, you know, you both were here previous on campus and uh, just in the last few years, we can see how much campus is changing, how many things are, uh, are, are expanding or just the, the implementation of, of technology into so many areas. What are things, is it strange for you sometimes to walk campus or drive campus and, and have those flashbacks to the old? What things have changed that have really struck you or, or stood out to you or you find really interesting from your time as a student to now as a staff? Yeah, there's a lot that has changed, a lot. <laughs> um, I think one of the big things for me was like driving through and I and I thought like, oh my gosh, this road used to go all the way through and now there's a big building <laughs> in my way. Um, you know, you walk away for a while and you think that like nothing will change, but um, you know, they've obviously given facelifts to some of the old buildings. Um, there's brand new ones um, that weren't there before. So I found it like kind of surprising that I didn't know my way around as well as I thought. Um, I enjoy running and walking. And so I've had to like take some time kind of like by foot to find my way around again, um, because it is a challenge by car. <laughs> when you think that you're going to drive through and it's not a possibility. How about you, Todd? What, anything strike you as, as, oh, wow, that's really different. So, I mean, my experience, I was graduated in 88. Bree was 20 years later and now we're 20 years past that, right? So we're looking at 20 year chunks. So it's kind of funny. I drive down Green Street and go through campus town. And when I was in school here, like the tallest building was three stories high, right. you know, except for the University Inn, which was the tallest building in Champaign at that point, right? And now it's like every time you turn around, there's a 12-story building. It's like, where are all the people coming from that are living in all these apartments, right? But, but they're there. And the landscape and the architecture of the university has changed so much in that time frame. I mean, when I was working at WPGU, we were in the basement of Weston Hall. I mean, literally in the basement of Weston Hall, right? And I know, you know, about when Bree was here, it had moved over and it was on like first and green over in that area. And now I'm not even sure where it is. <laughs> so for if there was an alumni thing for WPG, I don't know that I could find it on campus and I work here, right? <laughs> so there's a lot of change that's gone on through campus. I lived in Garner Hall, you know, over in what we call the six pack. Well, that's gone. And now it's part of SDRP and Ikenberry Commons, you know? So, I mean, you know, Scott Snyder, those are still there, 
Um, so there are some holdouts that, that I still remember. And of course, you've got some of the, the older residence halls and stuff. But yeah, just the amount of change um, in, in driving around campus, you know, for people that come back after being gone for 20, 30 years for homecoming, they're going to be amazed. I mean, the Smith Center, when you go down 4th Street, that's phenomenal. Yeah, and and we followed and and all the all the sports stuff that's been built. The I Hotel. I mean, what a concept! You know, twenty five years ago that wasn't there, and now there's a hotel out there in the middle of what used to be the South Farms. So, yeah, that the, the south end of campus is always the one that kind of throws me off because I drive in to work that direction, and I remember the days, you know, when I was younger, uh, what that looked like, and now it it just seems almost like metropolitan because based on compared to what it was before, just so many things there. I used to put, I wrap myself in my overcoat that I got at Champagne Circle. That's a big old army <laughs> overcoat, right? And I would go walk in the snow when it was snowing and listen to music on my Sony Walkman cassette player out to the South Farms because it made me feel like I was back home, right? When I was homesick, South Farms was someplace I could go. So I felt like I was at home. It smelled like home. I grew up in a small town near farms and stuff. And when I, when I was homesick, I'd go out there. Now it's like you go out there and it's like, the credit union, apartment buildings, <laughs> Carl orthopedics. I mean, right. it's all done. Right. So uh, let's keep reminiscing for a moment. Um, so for you guys, uh, it is homecoming. And that, that, you know, that's kind of why we're doing this podcast, we're talking to you as alumni. Um, do you have any particular memories of homecoming from your days as a student? Uh, ones you can share as Todd smiles and laughs. <laughs> um, any, any, any particular memories or, or uh, activities that you remember from those homecoming days? I... I remember like the, I had gone to football games, like, you know, growing up through throughout grade school, high school, just sporadically um, here, but coming back um, as a student and going to a football game was like, I remember being a really cool experience, like seeing all the um, orange in the stadium. Um, and I was part of Greek life when I was here on campus. And so I remember, um, you know, making a float for the parade um, and all the activities that kind of like surrounded homecoming week. So back in the eighties, you know, in addition to, you mentioned the tailgating and the homecoming games, um, when Mike White was coaching, the, the tailgating was just phenomenal. They called it tailgate for a reason, right? Um, and students, alumni, just everybody coming back for it. And when homecoming and Halloween would fall on the same weekend, hmm. it was like an extravaganza on campus. <laughs> I mean, in the 80s, they, they literally shut down Green to Sixth to Daniel to Wright and just blocked it off. And it was just a huge party. People in costumes, um, you know, pushing, we'll just say shopping carts full of beverages <laughs> around with them as they went. Water, I'm sure, right? Water is definitely yeah, water. I mean, I mean, you know, people always talk back at that time period about the Halloween party at Southern Illinois University. Um, the U of I's had gotten so big and it had gotten out of hand. Um, but I do remember some some of the awesome group costumes we did for <laughs> Halloween. Um, we had gone as as multiple different things. One of my favorite things was when we went as alumni. You know, we put on, you know, like plaid pants and a sports coat, did our hair gray, <laughs> stuffed our shirts with pillows, bathed in Old Spice, and then just kind of gave money away to people. I mean, that was, was like, hey, we're alumni. Here you go. Here's some cash and stuff. Um, and I don't, I don't see that as much anymore. You know, even 15, 20 years ago, um, being around campus, I, Bree um, knew my niece who was here at that time. And so I kind of been able to stay connected through the time period of people that I know that were students here. Um, and now both my kids have just graduated from here and my daughter's in law school. So, um, so yeah, homecoming is kind of special to me because it's, you know, my wife went here, both my kids went here. And even though we're here, it's, it's still homecoming, you know? Right. Right. So uh, let, let's, we, we want to, I can talk to you guys for hours about this kind of stuff, but we're trying to keep it as a short podcast. That's, that's what we do here at Healthy Illini. Um, but so let's kind of wrap up a little bit here. Uh, you, you're talking about your experiences and you're talking about how it had, uh, it has influenced who you are now. And Todd, you, you specifically talked about McKinley and not knowing then, and now you know. So hindsight is always 2020, and, and everyone has those, if I'd only known or realized moments. Um, but looking back, uh, if you could go back in time and, 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 and have some way to talk to your freshman self, 
uh, what is some what what is some advice that you would give that look now looking back um, and understanding the journey that you took or the things that you you realize in that hindsight? Um, you know, my my family picked up and moved from Illinois to Ohio when I was in my freshman year of college here, and that's I think that's kind of why I ended up staying in Champaign. Champaign became my home at that point because I didn't make the move to Ohio. I I stayed during the summers and worked and stuff like that. Um, and I think to, to my freshman self, looking back, um, I probably would, would say to me to, you know, focus on, on what's going on here and now while you're at school, the classwork and the, the classes in school is, is a big part of college, but you do so much growing up in college. Um, and you learn so much about yourself. You learn to manage your life. You learn to manage your own health care. You know, you have to take it upon yourself to call and make an appointment and show up on time and take your medicines the way they're prescribed for you. Mom's not going to sit there and give you a pill anymore, right? You got to learn to manage your rent. You got to learn to go shopping. You, you know, you're doing your own laundry. There's so many aspects of growing up that happens in college life. And if, if I'd have known then, what I know now, I would have told myself to take advantage of those things and learn as much as I could um, about the other things in life. Don't, don't get me wrong. The, the classes are important and getting the good grades <laughs> are important. Um, but, you know, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy, right? Um, and I think that there's so much to learn at the university besides what you're learning in a book or in a classroom. And people really need to take advantage of that to get the full college experience. I feel bad for the kids that weren't here last year because of COVID. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like we have two freshman classes on campus now because you got the people that never were on campus that are sophomores because everything was online. And then the true freshmen coming in this year. Um, and I feel bad for the people that graduated and, and didn't get to have a full on graduation ceremony. So maybe they'll come back and enjoy homecoming. Sure. What about Bri what about you, Brie? What would you uh, tell yourself I, if you go back? I kind of took mine from me. Um, <laughs> I was going to say something to the same effect of um, not that the, the academics aren't super, super important and, you know, getting good grades um, is, is a phenomenal thing. But I think I would have told myself to close the books a little bit more often and kind of take advantage of those real life experiences, kind of like he said, because um, the what you can pull from those is just as important as what you learn in, in the classroom. And some of those contacts you make in those situations are gonna further things down in life, you know? Um, you know, your connections through your, your house, if you're in the Greek system, through friendships, through working at PGU, through jobs that you worked on campus, you know, maybe you're a clerk in the library, making sure that people aren't sticking gum under the tables and stuff, but you meet people in those situations and they can be lifelong friendships and, you know, it might be somebody that can recommend you for a job down the line. Yeah, I've long said that you, you learn a lot from books at, at, in, in college, but you also learn a lot about yourself. And, and I'm not sure, like Todd said, I'm not sure which lesson is more important. Uh, they're both important, but it's really important to, to learn who you are and understand who you want to be and how to get there and those sort of things. So uh, any last thoughts, anything you, you would uh, you would share? I know you both uh, care passionately about the campus, care passionately about the student body, and that's a lot about why you're back. Um, any last messages here on Homecoming you'd like to share with, uh, with our current students? No, I think, I think we kind of like summed it up. Just enjoy the week um, and all the opportunities that are out there for you guys. All right, well, as far as the students are concerned, um, there's gonna be a lot of people back on campus um, that are potential mentors and potential people you can, can get a lot of value from. So, you know, if, if there's something in, in your, you know, it, within the classes you're taking or within your department where you have an opportunity to meet some of the alumni coming back um, that can be huge. I mean, connections made during homecoming with a potential employer because they're back for homecoming week being honored for something or just because they came back, um, you know, maybe they gave a bunch of money and have a business college named after them or something like that. Either way, if you get an opportunity to connect with those people, that's something that really can make a difference for you in the long run. And then, you know, 20 years from now, you can come back and be that person. Even if they're wearing plaid pants and... <laughs> are covered in Old Spice. And, and making it rain with the money. <laughs> <laughs> that is an image I will take with me for a long time, Todd. I, I have pictures. I can post them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll be hunting you down for those. 
Bree, Todd, thank you so much for being here this morning. I really appreciate you taking the time. All right. Thanks, Matt. Thank you. Go on, I. So there you have it. It's homecoming here. And uh, we hope you have a great week. We hope you're enjoying your time. We hope you connect with people and feel a part of the campus. Uh, if you want to connect with us, if you want to have continue the conversation, whether it be about this topic or any other topic, you can find our information in the description of this episode. But as always, thank you for joining us today. You are on a personal journey, no matter where you are in it. You are important and you matter. Your health and wellness are important and matter. And we are here to keep you well to excel. So go have a great homecoming week, Illini. Let us know how you're doing, and we'll catch you next week on Healthy Illini.